Uh, so I'm an engineer at uh, Zendesk. And so one of the things that we have a lot of kind of uh, floating around our system are protobuf schema files. And so these protobuf schemas get turned into messages in Kafka at the end of the day, but we have a lot of legacy in uh, you know, metadata and source code comments and all kinds of stuff that's in protobuf. So let's get into kind of kind of pulling that into data hub for, for wider usage. Um, just going to hit a couple of different points, just kind of give you the, the top level, high level context of what's going on here. Uh, some examples of just some, some basic schema and documentation uh, ingestion into Data Hub. And then we'll get into a little bit more advanced features about actually adding um, extensions to the protobuf schema to annotate uh, your, your messages to pull in even more data than, you know, is, was even, you know, that I thought possible when I started this. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So, you know, I think like most folks who are using protobuf, we have a CICD process that takes um, the text-based schema files and generates our protobuf client libraries, uh, you know, our different client bindings. Um, so this was kind of an opportunity, I think, for us to kind of inject ourselves into that existing process and pull in all kinds of information into Data Hub uh, documentation, links, properties, tags, terms, ownership, and domain. Um, on our future roadmap is, is kind of looking at also contain, containers and deprecation status. Um, we find that, you know, for a lot of the stuff, the producers of the the messages, you know, high, and the ownerships of the owners of the schemas has this information kind of naturally. And so their workflow is, is integrated where they don't necessarily even have to be aware of, of Data Hub itself and, and putting data into it manually. So how does, how does this general process work? Um, so you might think that we end up parsing all of these uh, schema text files, and that's actually not the case. Um, we would use the schema files for the raw view within Data Hub, but in general, we're ingesting the protobuf uh, descriptor binary. This is kind of a temporary file, essentially, that's used when the client libraries are being generated. So what I've done is I've created a Data Hub protobuf module it's, it's uh, Java based that will take in this binary file and, and optionally the, the text files and emit those as, um, you know, pieces of different types of data into Data Hub. So that's kind of how it plugs in. All right, so let's just kind of look at some examples because um, I think that's probably the best way to do it. So at the end of the day, you know, we're getting things like documentation, ownership, tags, and things I've mentioned before. Um, one of the challenges with protobuf, which are highly nested, is a given protobuf file might have multiple messages in it, and some of those might be um, entirely nested. And some of those might be top level entities. And so there was some work done to take a look at the file structure and take a look at the graph of the nested, uh, nested entities and try to figure out what are my, what are my root entities. Uh, and we do that um, you know, on a per file basis. So like within a given file, what's the root entity? And then also as, as like the combination of all your schemas, what are the root entities? And we'll pull those out. Um, you can, of course, override it and say, well, I, I'm interested in this specific message to be emitted as a, as a data set into Data Hub, um, but we do a lot of automatic detection, hopefully covers most use cases. Um, and so, you know, one of our goals was, of course, to have that both the tabular um, view and the uh, raw view, and with the raw view is uh, optional. You know, one of the things with protobuf is that your actual full schema is off often spread out through multiple files. And so the raw view is not a concatenation of all of those different files. It's just the, the primary file. Um, however, we do within the tabular view actually support the full nesting. Uh, also, another thing that you'll come across is you'll, you'll see a lot of like well-known types. Um, and we do our, our best to map those into, you know, the data hub types. Um, so these are, basically wrappers that Google creates. Um, so like, for example, uh, I think, you know, how, how we represent a string or how we represent a timestamp um, with primitives, it could be, could be done in different ways. Um, and essentially, that's what these wrapper types are doing. Um, but we just kind of support them and show the native data type. Um, there's, there's a bug in the screenshot. Clearly, it should be a timestamp and not a struct. 
the intent is there. Uh, the other kind of complexities with protobuf schema is, you know, we have, you know, one of, so we have union types, we have array types, we have map types, um, we have all of this kind of complex structure, and all of that is, you know, appropriately nested or, or appropriately displayed within Data Hub with, with the great support for nested objects that already exist in Data Hub, so that was a good, good match. Uh, the other thing that our product buff files have is they have a lot of you know C style inline documentation and and we you know references and links and things to, to different sources. So we definitely wanted to, to source that information from these text files. And so we'll pull in things like descriptions on messages, descriptions on columns. We'll pull out some standard things like Slack channel links and get owners uh, and you'll see them populated as institutional memory and descriptions. And the same thing at the field level too. So we'll we'll pull out and this through, show them where you might expect. Uh, the other thing we'll do is like it is like if there is a, a hyperlink next to a specific field, we'll we'll definitely reference which field um, we're referring to with those institutional memory. Uh, the file, the raw file descriptor set itself, we also decided to keep as a property. Um, so this is a base64 encoded binary of the file descriptor set, which could be reused down the line. Um, you know, maybe we want to re-ingest that binary without going through a CICD process again, because we're just possibly updating um, the way that we're parsing that particular binary into data hub objects. Uh, the other idea that we had is that this this uh, binary could be used to at runtime decode schema. So we could give it a name of schema, go and look it up in Data Hub, pull down this pro this binary file, and on the fly generate uh, you know the ability to to read or decode that message. Uh, and this kind of uh, bridges the way. So we also support primary keys. And this is also the first example of us where we're using an extension of the protobuf field options. And we're gonna go into the next section and talk about how we can do annotations. Um, and, and this is one of the more simple ones we're just adding the primary key in our... Okay, uh, so we're, we're talking about uh, protobuf here. So Google has a protobuf version two where they kind of supported these this, this ability to extend their internal types. Uh, so these are like uh, options that are kind of around the, the compilation of the protobuf files and not actually part of the message formats themselves. So, so the options and the annotations that we're creating here, while they are part of the you know, client libraries and they are part of the binaries, um, they're not actually sent over the wire. Uh, and they show up even in Perobita version three uh, as you know, generally unknown or without uh, properly registering the extension. So it's just kind of ignored, which is great. So we can use it for our purpose and not affect anything else downstream. And there's two types, there's a message option and a field option. And we're basically just talking about message options or data set level options, field options are you know, column levels. So this would be like a definition here where we def uh, de define, so our primary key, for example, is a field option. And then here, um, we're actually setting that on an actual field, in this case, a, a user ID. And then at message level or data set level, this is how you would interact with this particular metadata definition here. And we're, in this case, we're passing tags on a data set. All right. Um, the other thing that kind of we're supporting is you can actually emit a particular annotation as multiple in multiple ways. So you could have something that is stored as a property, a tag, an owner, all at the same time. There's not you with well, that one annotation can actually generate multiple um, aspects within Data Hub. So this the list that we support are you know properties, tags, tag tags, and tag lists are basically the same. Terms, owners, and domains as of today. Let's get into some examples. Um, <clears throat> so this is kind of a, this is an overview of the types of protobuf entities that we support. Like how can you, what types of annotations we'll support. So mostly we support strings, booleans, enums, and then uh, repeated, and I'll get into examples of those. So the first thing I wanna talk about is domain ownership. So this is the ability to kind of, um, you know, teams or, or user ownership. So I'm going to create an annotation that can be repeated. So we can obviously have a data set that's owned by multiple teams. Um, and then we also have this uh, ownership type too. So like, for example, a data steward, this 
this name of the annotation is actually, um, you know, follows along with the, um, uh, the, the enum type that's de defined within Data Hub. So data steward and those new types that were just added, as well as the uh, legacy ones too. So the uh, domain again is, is you know, basically similar to, we're just gonna create an annotation for the domain and then that'll be again sent to the data set. So this is how we would define that. And there's lots of examples on how to define that. And then this is how we would use it. So we have a message here, it's in the marketing domain. So the marketing would generate uh, your, your marketing domain there. The team ownership here would be added to the data set as owners, as you'd expect. By default, it is assumes a corp group. Uh, however, you can always override it by specifying the corp user instead. And uh, you'll, in this case, we exposed it as both the main objects, owners, and then as well as properties. So I'm just pointing out that you're seeing it in both places. Uh, wherever we use, we're using a repeated or an array of values um, in the properties file, we'll naturally turn those into um, arrays, JSON arrays. All right, so there's a lot of different types of properties. So this is like us just defining the different kinds. Um, but at the end of the day, this is kind of the output, right? So you can define, you know, prop one, two, and three, Booleans, string values, lists, uh, and um, uh, protobuf enum types. Uh, we can also export tags. So, you know, tags on both the message or the field levels. So we define them like this. And again, this is more of the same. But at the end of the day, you might have a message that has annotations like this, and they're generated on the data sets. These are this particular field details. Again, the exact same thing, automatic generation of tags. And then we can do the same thing with the terms. The only difference with the terms is that the terms must exist within Data Hub before you try to ingest this. We're not actually creating new tag or terms. We are creating new tags if they don't exist. But in this case, this must exist. I'm creating a protobuf definition here. These integers don't matter, but it just allows me to use them either as an enum or as a fully qualified uh, term. And those again will work on either data sets or or columns. And so just in summary, you know, we're we're taking information and annotations from protobuf files and we're sending all the information over to Data Hub. That's it for me. Amazing. Just want to say David. that this is yeah, just want to say that this is actually really cool and it really fits in with our what we are trying to drive. Uh, in kind of data cultures around the world, uh, shifting left is what we're calling it, uh, moving, uh, giving data producers tools to produce metadata right next to where their data definitions live. And this is one part of that story. Um, huge thanks to David and the entire team for uh, contributing this. We have similar support for dbt right uh, you, if you remember we have support for mapping dbt meta elements so you can check in your dbt models add meta elements alongside those models and they get automatically reflected in data hub so we're just pushing on this uh, approach of check in and version your artifacts just like code and good things will happen